Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and a little bit of a game development history here. There was a program back in the late 80s, early 90s that absolutely dominated the game development art scene. And that was a little program called Deluxe Paint. Started life in 1986 as a program called Prism, created at Electronic Arts. This was their internal tool for creating graphics for their games. Used to make tons of games at EA, such as uh, say Eye of the Beholder, but this thing was just used industry-wide. It was used to make tons of 16-bit games, tons of LucasArts adventure style games, even id software for all their earliest art creation they used deluxe paint so why am i talking about a 30 plus year old graphics program well today's program is actually inspired by it it's a modern update or interpretation of deluxe paint that harkens back to deluxe play in a way that may actually shock you it's called uh, deep paint js uh, and you can see it running in front of you right now and the thing is even though it's an homage to an existing program if you are doing um 16-bit style art or 8-bit style art or basically anything with a fixed palette, this is actually a really good option for you. And here you can see uh, an example scene of what you can work with here. You've got a lot of modernized tools here. So for example, you've got uh, multiple frames of animation. You have uh, multiple layers here. So for example, I could come here and create a new layer over here uh, and you've got your typical blending modes here. So let's do a lighten layer here. Let's pick something here. Uh, let's go up here and pick our brush. Let's actually pick that brush right there. All right, there, and let's change the size of our brush a little bit. So we got a big yeah, preview on screen as I do it. Softness, the opacity, we can have dithering of it. So if you're looking for a pixel art style tool, this is just a great choice in that regard. So here you see, we're just gonna do some color dithering on top of our image here. Why would you do this? I don't know. Let's say you wanted to do some water frothing at the corners. You could do that there. But as you see here, there are your typical art style tools here. We've got uh, line tools here. Oh, why are you not drawing lines? So, oh, sorry, that was just straight draw tool. You know, let me pick a different color and a different dithering so you can actually see what I'm doing. So here you can see, let's jack the opacity up there 100%. So you can paint on top and let's move from blend to just normal. So here, you can do traditional painting. You guys control over the size of your brush as well as the tip size and so on. You've got a variety of selection tools here. You have gradient tools here. Uh, you have cloning and stamping, traditional fill tools here to manipulation and so on. But some of the biggest things here are actually your palette control. So I'm gonna start here. We'll start with a new image here. Uh, obviously you can change the size of your image and details of it as well. Uh, but then the big thing here is you're gonna work with a palette. So you've got a ton of different palette options here. So down here, you'll see the palette control here, you can load in fixed color palettes. So this is a big thing if you're doing pixel art work. You normally want to uh, kind of recreate the fact that a lot of these old systems had a 16 or 32 or 64 or whatever uh, color limit. So if you say you want to create art in the style of a ZX Spectrum or a ZX Spectrum, here we have just ZX Spectrum colors. So we come in here and we can paint accordingly. Now, one thing I do wish that this tool had was a fat bit editor. There doesn't seem to be a grid based per pixel style editor. Like you can zoom in obviously and deal with an individual pixel, uh, but I do wish it did have that grid snapping style and it may actually have it. I haven't found it in this case though. So you do have fine tune control over the palette. You can of course also create your own color here and we can paint them in there. And one of the really neat things you can do with this program. So I'm just gonna randomly create this image so here we go let's throw that one in there let's throw some green in there another shade of green don't worry there is actually a point to what i'm doing so here we go some more green we're going to stick to the sickly green colors here and so so what you can actually do is instead of using a palette that was defined like this you can actually draw your image out and you can actually come up here to palette and say from the image. And then what it'll do is take all the individual colors you've used in your image and actually make those part of your palette, it, it, consisting of your palette. And you can save out your palette, reuse it, and so on. So if you'd want to create a consistent art style with your own palette, you can do that as well. You've also got controls over actually changing the palette. And this is easier to illustrate if I go back to a big time image. So let's bring back this high uh, resolution image here. You'll notice immediately the performance is quite solid. Again, here I am zooming out, scroll wheel, middle mouse button to pan around. It is Again, everything you would expect from a pixel editor, other than the fact that you don't have that fat grid. But again, the big thing here is the palette functionality. What you're gonna find here, uh, and this is a little bit on the buggy side, there is this thing here, I can optimize colors. When I actually do this, it is a little bit slow. So I'm gonna say, okay, make this a uh, 64 color palette, and I'm gonna pause because this, again, does take a little bit of time. It doesn't give you immediate feedback here either. So you don't want to just slide this around or your computer is just gonna go, oh, well, it's figuring this out. So I'll be back in a second. 
Okay, so it took a little bit of time, but there you see it actually generated down to this color palette over here. So we're now down to a fixed 64 color palette. We could have actually switched it out. So I've got this image right here uh, using this primarily blue uh, set of palettes. What I could do is come in here and find another one. So let's say uh, Graphics Kit 16. So I've got an existing image and I want to bring it to the palette set that I am using for my image. I can do that. So I'm going to grab Graphics Kit 16 as my choice. So instead of doing Optimize, we'll just switch it over to Graphics Kit Actually, let's do 32. Give it a little bit more to work with. And again, this will take a second. So I'll pause here. And there we go. It updated to use the other palette now and swap the colors over as best as possible. So again, if you're doing pixel art and you're trying to stick to a very consistent palette and art style, very valuable tool in that regard. Uh, you do have undo and redo. It is mostly reliable. You also have control over the dithering with just about every single dithering algorithm you could ever think of. Uh, it, and they all definitely have different performance ramifications as well. So if you want to add dithering to your image, you have the option available right there. Uh, you can export your image out. So when you save it, your options are ping, uh, depaint JSON, and the PSD is coming soon, so Photoshop document. And then interestingly, the old school Amiga uh, formats, including AIF imaging. Uh, another really neat thing you can do, and I think this image might be too big, so I'm not 100% certain it'll work with this particular image. So let's go to something a little bit more uh, old school. All right, so here we got a more Amiga-y kind of image. What I can actually do, let's go ahead and... Oh, need a... Need a All right, let's off this a little bit. Ooh, more okay. okay. All right, so here we go. go. And I'm just going to... Draw that. Now let's just throw some... Some size in here. All right, so we got this transparent image and so on. Perfect pixel art. I've slaved over that for hours. But what you notice is you got this little Amiga tab over here. You can actually preview this in the original... Uh, um, Deluxe paint. My brain just stopped for a second there, uh, which is good because we're going to have to wait anyway. So you might as well hear me bumble around. But there's literally an emulator built into this thing uh, that loads the original uh, Amiga version of Deluxe paint and previews your image in that paint. I don't know why we got a solid background color of red here, which is a little bit annoying, but if you want to go ahead, you've got the old school imaging here that you can preview your image at uh, in what the original program would actually look like. And this has actually been open source, by the way. So if you want to check out the source code for the original uh, deluxe paint, which by the way is very, very, very limited, uh, you can actually do so. But it's a neat little functionality they built in there. Uh, yeah, so that is kind of the functionality that's available here. You've got and you actually got most of the tools that you would need to do pixel art in this day and age. Uh, again, it's, it's a better tool than, say, um, uh, Microsoft Paint, uh, although I know you have legions of fans that love the Microsoft Paint these days. But if you're really trying to get that retro 16-bit uh, color graphic or try to recreate the look of, say, a Monkey Island or whatever, uh, Deluxe Paint was the tool that was originally used to create these things. So a program that is paying homage to it and literally includes a retro copy of it inside is certainly an option. Now, one thing I didn't mention to start this video because a little bit of bait and switch going on, I didn't tell you what platforms this runs on. And this will run on Windows, run on Mac, run on Linux, maybe even run on Amiga. I'm not sure, and don't quote me on that. And what you'll notice here is it's running in the browser. I don't know if you picked that up earlier on, uh, but yeah, this is a browser-based application, and it is just flawless as a browser-based application. So I, I never really noticed that we were running in the browser. You get right-click menus. They show up fine. Um, you get, you know, just basically the kind of performance you would expect, other than occasionally when you're switching between the uh, fixed palettes. That's where the performance can go... But other than that, you never notice that you are running in a browser, but you can also run it uh, locally. It is a web-based app that can be built. I think it's node-based. Uh, it is also, by the way, open source. So that is another key part about dpaint.js. Uh, it's open source project. It's under the MIT code license. Again, it's written in JavaScript, so you can run it on any platform you wish. Uh, the online version is what we were just checking out right there. The link is available right there. Uh, again, you got most of the functionalities you'd want. Oh, I didn't cover effects and filters, but it does have effects and filters as well. And it does have support for all those old school uh, Amiga formats. And you can even load up Amiga disk files. So if you have old saves lying around, you can open them up in this guy as well. It is free and open source. And again, if you want to build it yourself, you can see right here, it's, uh, I guess it's ES6. So it's not necessarily... Well, it is NPM. I don't know what it's written with. It's JavaScript. It's relatively easy to package it into a standalone application if you want to run it locally on your computer instead of running it on their link. But if you do want to go ahead and check this one out, literally you just open up 
this guy right here and your painting. And it's a really cool program in that regard. Uh, there's documentation available here if you want to learn more about the particular pieces of this guy. Uh, also, if you're interested in the emulator that was built in here, it is based off the scripted Amiga emulator. I did mention earlier on that Deluxe Paint, the original uh, Amiga source code from 1986, is actually available out there as well. Um, you can see the entry point is called Prism, which is interesting because, again, Prism was the name of the in-house tool that was used at Electric on Electronic Arts before they decided to turn this into uh, a painting package. Uh, so if you want to check it out, the source code is available, and it is old school C code. That means like uh, 8.3 uh, file names, so you never have more than that in terms of size, so eight characters on the left, and up to um, three characters in size on the right. And again, the entry point into this source code is available right here. So if you ever want to come in and see how programs used to be written in old school C, uh, this uh, source code is available out here, as well as the original documentation and kides and so on. Um, so yeah, if you want to really go down the rabbit hole of being retro, the source code for Deluxe Paint is available out there. Now, I don't know how I would use this one. It's uh, under the license of, I don't know, so it's Computer History Museum Software License Agreement. I've never read it myself. I would obviously not paste, base any... Um, commercial projects on this thing and more of a historical relevance type thing and that's about it uh, but interesting for um you know history sakes so ladies and gentlemen that is uh dpaint.js uh, recently updated uh, just a couple days back a bunch of new features were added to it they don't do formal releases as far as i can tell so i couldn't tell you exactly what was in the update but if you're looking for a pixel art tool especially if you are looking for a browser-based pixel art tool this one is a very very cool project and i would highly recommend checking it out uh so yeah that is dpaint.js let me know what you think comments down below and i'll talk to you all later goodbye